Hi, and welcome to another 5-minute tip. I've been getting a few questions from some of my viewers about my layout. Now, I'm using Cinema 4D R14 currently, but in my R13 layout, I had a bunch of special stuff. I had custom palettes, I had a texture view tab, I had a few different things, and I thought it might be fun to talk about some of these aspects of my layout as a 5-minute tip. So, the first thing that's special about my layout in Cinema 4D is that my monitor is not the same size as what I'm recording, and Cinema 4D is in full screen mode. But I get around that by creating a sort of a blank space down here. Now you can do that by, uh, I think under the customization menu, you can say new group window. I think this is it. And then you can sort of hover over the knurled bit at the top. And then you can drag it anywhere you want. So if you wanted more space from the left, you can drag it to the left. And you can actually change how much space is to the left or the bottom. So that's how I managed to make my Cinema 4D interface fit in the correct amount of space for my screencasting. If you don't want it anymore, you can always... Uh, right click it and say undock and then you can close it but in my case I'm going to need it so I'll just put it back down at the bottom I'll undock this one here by right clicking it saying undock and then closing it and then I can just move this down now in order to make this easily accessible and so I don't have to do it every time I created a new layout now, Cinema 4D comes with a few different layouts. It comes with an animation layout where the timeline is dominant down here. It comes with a body paint 3D painting layout where the viewport is dominant and they give you the painting tools over here at the left and so on. The startup layout is your default layout and you can always go here to the customization submenu of window and you can say save as startup layout or save layout as and that's how I've created these layouts so I have a body paint 3d paint layout that I've called screencast cinema 4d automatically appends user to the end of it if it's not a built-in layout so when I go to my body paint 3d paint screencast layout it's the same thing as the body paint 3d paint layout but I've added my spacer at the bottom here so you can see the entire layout in the area that I'm recording. If you created another layout and you wanted to save it, you could just go up here to Window, Customization, Save Layout As, and then you can choose a name for your layout. So in this case, I will call it Body Paint 3D Paint Demo. I just save the layout and then in this menu I'm now on body paint 3d paint demo or I can go back to screencast and then I can go back to demo where the spacer is taller so that's a really cool way of uh, creating different layouts for yourself now in addition to creating layouts you can create completely custom shortcut menus and windows so let's go back to my standard screencast layout and right here we have the viewport it's pretty standard. If we go to Window, we can go to Body Paint 3D and we can get the Layer Manager, the Color Settings, or a New Texture View. So if I say New Texture View, I get a texture window where a loaded texture would show up. Um, not sure if I have any textures that I can load at the moment, but you can have a texture show up here and to dock this to another area all you have to do is hover over this area here in the corner where you get the finger icon and then drag it over the same area in this window you get another finger icon and then release it turns it into a tab so you can have these tabs at the top of a window so you can do a view with a texture and you can let's see what else would make sense maybe um, color settings this is kind of a strange example but you could even put that there so you can switch between texture and colors if you wanted to you could even take the colors and you can put it 
here by the by the attributes manager so you can switch between attributes and color and layers now you'll notice that these tabs are on the side if you want to change tabs from being on the top to the side you can right click on the tab and then go to tabs and choose whether you want them on the top the left or the right so that's a pretty cool trick as well for the last tip I'm going to show you how to create a custom menu like one of these so right now if you click and hold you get all of these primitives if you just click and release like I was doing just now it just gives you the first item that's highlighted see I've been creating a bunch of arrays and bends as I've been clicking around to create one of these menus for yourself it's actually pretty easy first you need to go into the edit palettes mode there may be a way to do it from this menu customize commands so customize commands brings up this window and then you can check the edit palettes button when you check this box everything turns blue and you sort of see the structure of your icons another way to get this open is just to right click and say customize palettes and it bumps you right into that mode once you're here you can add icon separators group separators or fill space you can also create a new palette so when you click new palette you get this strange looking window with an empty palette inside of it let's say I wanted to add grow selection shrink selection and set selection to its own current menu so I can search for selection and I can say I want to do grow selection I can do shrink selection and then I can do it looks like there's more than one tool here I'm not sure which is which and then set selection once I have these as a palette I can either drag that palette into a into, into an area above or below but if I wanted to turn them into a button what I can do is I can right click and I can say fold palette so it turns multiple icon palette into a single one and then I can just drag this button right where I want it so I could put this button after the light bulb for lights and then I can close this palette window I don't need it anymore I can then create a group separator or an icon separator to space things out a little bit and then when I close this I actually have these tools as a little menu that I can use I believe it's also possible to right click and change the orientation to make it vertical or horizontal before you fold the palette so it's not the most intuitive method of doing it but it is possible now you'll have to save your layout in order to get these changes or when you switch layouts or start the program again everything goes back to the default so a little bit of an unconventional tip but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps your workflow until next time See you.